Hi, my name's Claire Byrne and I'm 26 and I have, um, I'm legally blind and have a rare bone condition called osteopetrosis, which means I have too much calcium in my bones. Yep, since I was born, I was born pretty much blind and they did an operation to restore some of the sight in my right eye, um, but my left eye is completely blind. Uh, I was about nine months old when they diagnosed me because I had a squint in my eye that they were investigating and when they did an x-ray they found that my bones were a lot thicker than um, they should have been and um, so they diagnosed me then with osteopetrosis. I uh, broke a lot of bones, um, had about 62 fractures around about, um, hips, feet, uh, shoulder, fingers, toes, hips, pelvis, <laughs> you name it, it's probably been broken. Um, I went on a camp with the, uh, what were they called, Royal Blind Society, they were called back then, now they're Vision Australia. Um, they used to run a camp every year and do a lot of activities and one of those was horse riding and I just fell in love with being able to go on a bushwalk without having to walk and fall over and the horse could see where it was going so it was... Um, a really great experience and just to feel normal like I'm you know there's nothing wrong with me and I'm completely equal with everyone around me so I just fell in love with the sport and fell in love with the animal and yeah nagged my parents to get me a horse ever since. No I um, had lessons for well I went on trail rides first um, from the age of eight till about 12 and then uh, they put me into horse riding lessons at a riding school um, and I did that for about three years and then I got um, CC after that and I bought CC with some money that um, I got from breaking my nose on a council footpath. <laughs> yeah um, I had CC about three years before I started competing him and I went to a clinic um, about two years after I started pony club and jumping and running around barrels and doing all those crazy things that young people do and um, the girl that ran the clinic said I could go to the Paralympics if I wanted to. I just had to start learning um, dressage as my discipline. So I started doing that and competed at state level and then national level. Um, yeah, so that was pretty cool. Uh, yeah, I could have, um, but it's a lot of money and I didn't have that kind of money and my horse is quite old now he's 21 years old so he's sort of over all this dressage stuff and um, enjoys his work now in the school so well I'd been competing for a few years and um, I was called up by the riding for disabled because I was a life coach at the time and I was speaking out a lot and, and doing those sorts of things and they wanted me to do a um, talk on my experience with the riding for disabled and um, as I competed with them I never rode at their schools but I competed um, as a riding for disabled competitor and I went there to speak about my experience with their volunteers for that dinner and the uh, the president asked me why I wasn't working as a riding for disabled coach and I explained that the local centre is about four hours away um, one way by public transport so it's not really worth going all that way just to come home again and she planted the seed and said well why don't you start your own centre and I thought she was crazy <laughs> but my husband when we got home said why don't you have a go give it give it a crack so that's what we did and here we are <laughs> we had nothing when we started we had no land no horses nothing um, and I asked one of the guys across the road from where we live um, in Ransom if we could have his 10 acres to put some horses on to get them ready to be used in the school. And it was a very run-down property and I said I'd fix all the fencing and do all that kind of stuff, which happened. Um, we fixed all the property up. And then I was looking for a place where we could actually start the school because the horses were now trained up and all ready to go. We had no arena or anything for the um, riding to happen. so. I approached a couple of places and one of those was a real estate agent who had a place for rent and um, she said oh, it might be a bit much um, to rent the place and try and get an income and all that sort of thing, why don't you ask Pine Lodge if they'll let you have their facility um, because it hasn't been used for a while. So I did, I went with my mum 
um, and we spoke to Lorette, who's the owner of Pine Lodge, and she kindly donated the facility, so we're very grateful for that. Well, when we came, it was a bit run down because it hasn't been used um, for so long, so it was a bit overgrown. Um, the tie-up bays were sort of falling down, the roof had holes in it. and Yeah, it was a bit, you know, because when things aren't being used, they just get run down and start rotting and termites start eating. So, you know, we had a bit of painting to do and a bit of reconstruction to do and um, lots of grants and things that we had to apply for to get things fixed up. There was no um, ramp for our people to get on the horse from the wheelchair. Uh, all those sorts of things we've had to put in and, and do, um, but it's looking so much better now that you know we've been here a while and worked on it. We do um, horse riding for people with disabilities and disadvantages, so that might be um, someone who might be in foster care, um, or some, we have the elderly come out, they don't ride, but they do what we call animal therapy, so they come out and pat the guinea pigs and the goats and the chickens and have a great old time and have a little bit of a play with Lucy, our little pony. Um, and then we've got obviously our, our kids and adults for that matter with disabilities that do horse riding. Um, so they come out once a week and have a ride and have a lesson with our instructor. And we've also got horsemanship which is where they learn to um, work with the horses on the ground. So we've got a couple of girls in wheelchairs that are doing that at the moment. and. Um, yeah, so there's a whole lot of range of things. I sort of wanted to set it up so that we could help whoever needed help through the animals, basically. Um, well, that's a hard, hard thing to answer um, because the, it's always changing. Um, you know, when we first started, we only had two horse or three horses, actually and about four clients and that was the extent of our centre and now we've got nine horses and about 20 clients I think there is at the moment um, so it's growing all the time and of course we want to keep that growing and and get getting more help for more people and and getting out in the community obviously we'd like to make a bit more money so that we can fund it better because horses are so expensive and at the moment I'm the one who funds it we're not government funded um, so Obviously, one of the goals would be to um, get the horses funded by CPEC instead of my pocket. Um, and, you know, just providing more opportunities and more lessons and, and more things for the community. Yeah, that's definitely the big dream. Um, it would be a lot easier because we live about 20 minutes away, so it would be a lot easier to um, live on the same property as the horses, especially when there's emergencies and things. We've had to come out at midnight sometimes just to check on the horses. Um, you know, so it would be a lot easier on us and, um, you know, if someone forgets to feed, which can happen and all those sorts of things, we can just go down the back paddock and feed. Um, and it also opens up a lot more opportunities um, because obviously there's other people that use the arena here, there's you know all sorts of things going on which is, you know, that's how she makes her money so that's all good but um, you know to have our own place where we can just really maximise um, the help that we give the community would be amazing. Yes, uh, the coach is paid so the instructor gets paid for her time um, to, to teach our clients and we have two staff members which is me and um, another girl who's also um, paid by a supported wage type system um, so it's a little bit cheaper rate I guess uh, but yeah it's um, all volunteers apart from that. Yeah well that was one of the things that surprised me was I knew that the, the clients would get really you know see the benefits and and really um, get better I suppose and get stronger and all those sorts of things but um, what surprised me was the, the volunteers themselves got better as well and you know that they, they just come out of their shell and get a lot more confidence and feel good about themselves because they're doing good so that really surprised me was the difference that it made to them. Well it's just a real privilege to um, work here and to see this place grow you know I didn't really know where we were going to go we started with nothing as I said and I just put on Facebook um, if anyone was interested to set this place up come to my place on whatever date it was and we started from there um, you know it's just been an amazing ride I always say you know it's probably 
the craziest thing I've ever done, but it's definitely the best thing I've ever done.